holiday season drawing near, if you're planning on traveling to Canada, Mexico, or the Caribbean, you might want to consider the new passport regulations that are in effect. Plus, get the 411 on a new area code coming to town. And looking to have fun on a budget? Well, we'll show you where to get a great meal for a bargain. Those stories and much more starting right now on OC News. I'm Courtney Reed, and you're watching OC News, brought to you by the broadcast students at Cal State Fullerton. It's one of the biggest immigration stings ever. Immigration and Customs Enforcement agents arrested hundreds of immigrants with criminal records. Over the past weeks, ICE has been conducting what it calls a surge operation, where officers have made more than 1,300 arrests across seven counties in Southern California. Officers using tips and leads simply show up at the door of known fugitives and take them into custody. A heated dispute erupted in Washington Thursday over the treatment of terrorist suspects in American custody. Questions have been raised on Capitol Hill about the alleged mistreatment of the suspects. Some of the alleged te techniques include head slapping and simulated drowning. Administration officials deny any mistreatment of the suspects. Starting today, Americans flying to Canada, Mexico, and the Caribbean will now need a passport to get back into the country. Starting next year, Americans who plan to travel by sea or car within North America will also need to show proof of citizenship. Americans who left before the rule went into effect are able to return without showing a passport. Many people in the U.S. are struggling to keep food on the table. However, one organization is doing its part to help those in great need. OC News reporter Joanna Lazaro has more. <laughs> the sounds of tape stretching and forklifts moving heavy loads are the sounds that many are used to hearing at a warehouse. But at this warehouse, people in great need are getting a special gift. The Orange County Food Bank gathers every week to pack boxes of food for senior citizens and the poor. Over 19,000 boxes go out each week and helps keep food on the table for those who are struggling to make ends meet. Volunteers can be large groups or small groups ranging from high school students to a college sorority. And only a small amount of time is needed to make a big difference in a person's life. Two hours of our time really made a really big difference within the Orange, like the whole Orange County because really you're helping people in Orange County, like the hungry and people in poverty. Milk cans and other canned goods are among the food that is packed in boxes. The donations come from food drives held by schools, churches, and businesses. Volunteer programs like Pack-A-Box give people a chance to step out of their box and see the lives of the less fortunate. I would encourage people to kind of just like show kids like, this is a rewarding experience and it's not just the fact that you have to be here for the hours but because you're contributing to something bigger than yourself. If you'd like to pack a box or simply help those in need, go to the OC Food Bank website for more details. In Anaheim, I'm Joanna Lazaro, OC News. A mother of two will spend the rest of her life in prison for murdering a Newport Beach couple. Jennifer Henderson de Leon and her accomplices murdered Thomas and Jackie Hawks in 2004 off the coast of Catalina. According to the OC Register, De Leon showed no reaction on October 5th when she received the maximum term allowable in a sentencing. De Leon's accomplice, husband, husband Skylar De Leon, and the other defendants face separate trials in January, which could lead to death sentences. Getting a license could be a whole lot tougher. California is considering a, uh, using a pilot program to evaluate a driver's memory, reflexes, and vision to identify who should not be driving. Nothing has changed just yet, but a small portion of DMV offices across the state are running this program to monitor elderly drivers. If the program goes well, California residents may see the new test put in place by the year 2012. The LA City Council
Council will be asked to consider an up to two year suspension on any new fast food restaurant in South Los Angeles. The suspension is reaction to worries of an obesity epidemic and related illnesses including high blood pressure, diabetes, and heart disease. The LA Times has reported that South Los Angeles has the highest concentration of fast food eateries. The Orange County Transportation Authority Board has approved to fund more money to continue to construct the, well, the widening of 22, the 22 freeway. Officials say the project is expected to finish by March of next year. The freeway was built in the mid-60s to carry 115,000 cars. Today, more than 200,000 cars pass by each day. The project is worth $550 million. State regulators decided to add another area code to the 714 section of Orange County. The new area code 657 will cover the Anaheim Resort District as well as Fullerton, Orange, Santa Ana, and Yorba Linda, along with the coastal community of Huntington Beach. The first new phone numbers with the 657 area code will be issued by next summer. The rapid spread of cell phones, computers, and fax machines has caused the 714 area to run out of numbers. The Cal State Fullerton Anthropology Department is hosting an exhibit featuring puppets from all around the world. Erico Cayano has the story. Once you enter this tiny little room with the strings attached, about 80 puppets from all around the world will welcome your visit. Exhibit a world of puppets expression of culture is being held at the Anthropology Teaching Museum located in room 426 of McCarthy Hall. Justin Stewart is an anthropology graduate student, a curator of the exhibit. Stewart worked hard setting up the room and selecting most of the puppets from the Allen Cook's estimated 4,000 puppets collection. We had so many great puppets to choose from and the hardest part was actually cutting out puppets and creating kind of an easy flow. The next hardest part, I think, was actually creating um, an easy flowing exhibit that was organized and didn't look overwhelming to the visitor. Puppetry is an art form in general, which communicates beyond age, culture, ethnicity, and education, often without words. One of the docents at Stewart's exhibit Delphia Lawson looks back her old age growing up with these puppets. This show is a really nice reminder for people like myself who, who had a childhood with, the, with these items and for children who have never seen items like this. Uh, it's an amazing exhibit and a true culture. Children and adults can receive an equal inspiration, develop their fellow imagination, because puppets have no boundaries. My mission essentially with this exhibit is to, um, to show the differences but then also the similarities between culture uh, and I thought that puppets would be a great way to do that. Puppets are found almost everywhere in the globe and whether they're shadow puppets or stick puppets or marionettes they all serve the same purpose and they entertain and they educate um, the colors might be different, but we all share this art together. The exhibit will go on to December 15th. You still have plenty of time to visit, experience, and learn about the cultural diversity represented by these wonderful puppets. In Cal State Fullerton, I'm Erico Cayano, reporting for OC News. Looking to shed some pounds before the holidays? Well, we have some tips to help you keep it off, to put it off and keep it off. What's hitting Britney Spears this time? And looking for some serious R&R? We have that and what's new in entertainment after the break. The best way out is by coming in. Going to family learning programs helps you and your family lead better lives. Call 1-877-FAMLIT-1 because making it after all shouldn't just happen on TV. Do men have it 
easier than women when it comes to losing weight? According to a new study, men burn an average of 26% more calories a day than women. Researchers say women eat more vegetables than men, but still work out harder to lose weight. The differences in food cravings also help men stay in shape. Women tend to crave sweet snacks like candy and ice cream, while men tend to crave hearty protein-filled foods like chicken and beef. A new tip for women, eat more like a man. For more information, go to mypyramid.com.gov and get a personalized food pyramid that is just right for you. This month marks another year we will recognize all the women battling breast cancer and those who have lost the battle. This year, Ralph's Supermarkets are once again helping raise $170,000 for the month of October. While shopping, you will be able to see pink ribbons displayed on shelves in all Southern California Ralph's grocery stores. These ribbons will help customers identify what products and brands they can purchase to help reach Ralph's breast cancer donation. What are those rumors flying around about J-Lo? And is Jay Leno having late night withdrawals? Entertainment news guru Denise Vargas has the latest. Jennifer Lopez is on the front cover of Us Magazine reading, yes, she's pregnant. Sources say she might be carrying twins. Rumors swirled after the September 11th Just Sweet fashion show in New York, where she wore a loose green dress. Why such a swarm of controversy since her shoes have been spotted around town in all loose clothing, including her recent on-air interviews throughout this week, dodging the question of whether or not she is pregnant. And in breaking celebrity news, Britney Spears, after being stripped of her full custody of her two sons, one-year-old Jaden James and two-year-old Sean Preston to ex-husband Kevin Federline. And after or Thursday's court hearing, a judge ex expanded her visitations and has now been granted monitored overnight visitations. It seems the pop princess has taken the right direction as her record company said Spears' new album is to be released November 13th titled Blackout. And Lizzie Lohan checked out of Rehab Friday from the exclusive Cirque Lodge treatment center in Utah. Sources say she has finished the program and she is, do is done, but she might come back for outpatient treatment. Lohan had been in rehab since late July after her DUI arrest and admitting to suffering from drug and alcohol addiction. Finally, late night top dog Jay Leno looked like he's not ready to be put down just yet. Rumor has it that Leno is reluctant to pass over the, re the reins to the late night show Conan O'Brien. As promised for 2009, sources say that as the date draws closer, Leno's having trouble letting go. Leno's unwilling, although discreet, discretion has been over the past couple of months in his monologue. And the fifth, Latin rap conference, the fifth Latin Rap Conference is now in Los Angeles after being in San Diego and New York. Reporter Jamie Nomura has more info on the LCR. The Latin Rap Conference is the only conference that focuses on Latin rap and reggaeton genres. The LRC is also a forum to expose new artists to the music scene, such as Ceci B, one of the few female artists in the business. Hopefully more females, more females, a little bit more crossover, more widely known. We're trying to get on Kiss FM, you know what I'm saying? No. Um, I see more people, you know, doing their damn things, sticking together, making music that, you know, Latinos, uh, first generation born here can relate to. So that's very important to me. Latin rap is coming up as the new reggaeton. The LRC's mission is to educate, empower, and create a forum and a network of high quality business and progress. Even some supporters of the Latin rap movement have come out to this event, such as Evan Greenspan, who is a clothing store owner for hip hop and film, and also whose clientele includes Sendog and Mr. Cartoon, just to name a few. We represent original styles. We uh, have been here in LA uh, uh, doing business for 79 years. Uh, we basically created West Coast Hip Hop with our customers, NWA and Cypress Hill, uh, wearing our OG clothes on MTV. At the Key Club in Los Angeles, reporting for OC News, I'm Jamie Nomura. A perfect night on the town for college students no longer means paying high cover charges to a bump and grind in a busy club. 
OC News reporter Sharon Farsi Johnny has tips on how to save some money. For Cal State Fullerton students that are looking for something different to do on a Friday night, the answer is as local as downtown Fullerton. With sushi bars being all the rage, the unique choice is Chomp, a sushi bar located on Commonwealth Avenue with its long list of interesting sushi rolls to choose from, including the burrito roll, Chomp does an excellent job of combining Japanese cuisine with an American twist. For the college budget, Chomp even offers an all-you-can-eat deal for only $20 every Thursday. For a completely different environment, you only have to look as far as Rockin' Taco on Harbor Boulevard. Rockin' Taco is more than a bar that serves great Mexican food, it's an experience in itself. There's live music weekly from piano performers who will rock out with you until the evening ends. Be sure to submit your favorite song requests and be ready to sing and dance along, occasionally right on top of the piano. For camaraderie and to change up the nightlife a little, either location is a great choice in downtown Fullerton. Some of the most cherished things in this world are right in your backyard, OC News reporter Min Bui explains. The beauty of Southern California can all be captured in one view <laughs> at the Hilltop Park in Signal Hill. Since ancient time, people had long known that there were oil, but it wasn't until 1922 when a gusher that took four days to cap was discovered. Dutch Shell Oil Company was one of the first to own the gusher, signaling the beginning of fame for the city. Two years later, the city was nicknamed Porcupine Hill because of the oil towers covering the hill. Today, the park is one of the richest areas that holds oil in the world. Signal Hill is one of the most romantic places in Southern California, and it's just a few miles away from Orange County. Nowadays, the park is preserved as a place for picnics, friends, and family gathering. I like it. I like the view. Ocean. Is the, ocean. the ocean. And like when you're here at night, it's like illuminated. Illuminated. <laughs> the poem engraved path led the viewer to understand the sacred of the overlooking view. Telescope and benches help viewers to enjoy and relax after a long day. Just, I don't know, just the first time I came here, I liked it, but then I came here more and more. Just where I come to hang out and you know, take it easy. A signal stands at the center of the park representing the smoke signal fire, water tower, and oil gusher of the past. The three cutout silhouettes depict the Native Americans, the farmers, and an oil worker from the past. It is no secret that the overlooking Cliff Park is a symbolic beauty of what nature at its best can offer. This is Min Bui reporting for Orange County News in Long Beach. Coming up after the break, Kilmany Ducart tells us how people are taking charge of their health through cyberspace. Also, are you looking for a furry friend? We'll show you how to find that special companion when we come back. When your children ask where you got married, will you have to tell them over there by the unleaded? When we lose a historic place, we lose a part of who we are. Help protect historic places in your community. Visit nationaltrust.org. Technology is changing faster than ever. Kilmany Ducart joins us with information on how you might soon be able to find out details about your own health online, along with the latest in technology. Kilmany? Your health record may be available online soon. Microsoft announced its new program Thursday in Washington called Health Vault, which would allow patients to manage their own health record on the web. Microsoft says personal information is secured in an encrypted database and privacy controls are set entirely by the individual. Major health organizations already collaborated with Health Vault, including American Heart Association, Johnson & Johnson, and MedStar Health. What does a coin and a television have in common? The answer is their depth.
The latest and greatest in television is Sony's new TV called XEL1, which is just three millimeters thick, about the same as a coin. This new toy uses a new light emitting display technology that is based on electroluminescent organic materials for an even better picture than today's plasma screens. This TV is set to be available in Japan on December 1st for $1,700. There's still no word as to when it will be available in the U.S. Verizon has unveiled its fall lineup of phones, and the highlight was the LG Voyager. The Voyager is Verizon's response to AT&T's iPhone. Both phones have a sleek black exterior for a 2-megapixel camera and a touchscreen. Though both phones look similar, what sets the Voyager apart from the iPhone is its high-speed Verizon EVDO network. No price has been announced, however, the Voyager, the Voyager will be in stores around Thanksgiving. Are you looking to adopt a pet? Hundreds of animals are available at the Orange County Animal Shelter during the month of Dogtober. Reporter Ariana Guerrero has the story. Animal care services are gearing up for the third annual Dogtoberfest, which features hundreds of dogs, cats, and pets you wouldn't normally expect to see at the shelter. Right now we try and plan adoption events uh, quarterly, so we have approximately three to four per year. Uh, we do have one main one that we do in June, that's our pet fair, and usually our entire parking lot is full of uh, animal vendors and rescue groups and uh, anything else that we can do to promote adoption. When choosing that furry friend, there may be a few things you want to look for. What I looked for when I first saw him, it's more like I saw his face and he's just really cute. And then you have to take him out and then we um, went on a 20 minute visit. And what I looked for was to see if he's docile and not too aggressive. What I did was um, you just pretty much hold him and you flip him and you kind of like uh, if you were to hold a baby rock him on his back and if he doesn't um, if he doesn't move too much then he's pretty much docile and submissive and so that's a good sign and also if you were to t take his paw and squeeze it a little bit and see he doesn't really care so that means he is you know submissive and if you take the back side and just squeeze it a little bit and he doesn't do anything so he has a really good uh, tolerance. The Orange County Animal Care Services found nearly 10,000 homes for pets during the fiscal year of 2005 and 2006. With events like Dogtober and mobile adoption, they look forward to another great fiscal year. Our mobile adoption, we actually have a vehicle that takes available animals from our shelter and takes them to uh, mobile centers. It's basically, we take our animals here, we take them to another site and they can actually be adopted from there. For more information, please visit the shelter's website at www.ocpetinfo.com. In the city of Orange, Ariana Guerrero reporting for OC News. We felt the first of Santa Ana winds blow by this month here in Southern California. Although if there is no stopping this natural phenomenon, there is a possibility to forecast the gusts on a seasonal basis. Scientists are going to study the Santa Ana winds this fall to see if there are ways to predict how often the winds will blow every season. It's possible to predict about three days in advance if the winds will blow coming, will be coming. This information will help for firefighters to combat wildfires that are fueled by these winds. For now, researchers haven't come up with a way to reliably estimate how often the winds will blow during a particular season or how fast these winds will be. The world's first pageant gave honor to the women who have reached the age of elegance. The search was narrowed down to 15 lucky ladies. Courtney Reed has the story. All these women grandmothers, they're also finalists in the Miss Senior California pageant. Don't be fooled, the Miss Senior California pageant is more than just a beauty pageant. These lovely ladies are a triple threat, brains, beauty, and talent. Judges choose Miss Senior California based on her inner beauty, evening gown, and talent. Inner beauty is based on the contestant's personal philosophy of life. So, live out loud. Evening gown is based on the poise and grace of the contestant that best illustrates the age of elegance. The talent portion is based on the contestant that best demonstrates the gifts of today's senior woman. 
the contestants crooned, boogied, and tickled their way into the audience's heart. The show was fabulous. It was so much talent. The pageant motivated and encouraged women to use their full potential and share their positive outlook on life with others. But we've overcome it all. Proof, we're still here. I've learned that we don't grow older. It's just a number for one thing. And I was in this pageant in 1999, and I said I would never do it again, but it was so much fun today that I just may come back again. But at the end of the day, there can only be one Miss Senior California to compete in the Miss Senior America pageant in Las Vegas, and that was Susan Cashman of West Hills. For OC News, I'm Courtney Reed. News. Join us here again next week for more Orange County news and trends. I'm Bailey Quist. And I'm Courtney Reed. Thanks for watching.